Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Bytel, and today we're going to expand the utility of the motor controls trainer board by installing a manual motor starter. Before we begin, let me remind you, I am not an electrician and you cannot use anything in this or any other lecture as professional electrical advice. Follow the rules, follow the code. It's there for a reason, to protect people and property from hazards arising from the use of electricity. Some of the material and techniques you may see in this lecture may not be utilized for a permanent approved installation, but is for demonstration purposes only. This content has been developed for edification only. While reasonable care has been exercised with respect to its accuracy, I assume no responsibility for errors, omissions, or suitability for any application or misapplication of its contents. Let us begin. Recall we installed a circuit breaker on our motor controls trainer board in a previous application's exercise. The circuit breaker selectively energizes and de-energizes circuits based on its actuation state. Additionally, it serves to protect circuits from unusually high current events associated with short circuits. Let's expand the utility of our motor controls trainer board by adding a manual motor starter that not only selectively energizes and de-energizes circuits based on its actuation state and protects circuits from unusually high current events associated with short circuits, but also serves to protect circuits from sustained overload conditions. A manual motor starter is in effect a contactor and an overload element integrated into a single package. First, we'll test the basic operation of the manual motor starter. When the manual motor starter rotary switch is rotated fully counterclockwise, the ohmmeter indicates the manual motor starter L2T contacts are open. This particular manual motor starter also includes a locking slider that allows the motor starter to be locked into this position for lockout and tagout purposes. When the manual rotary switch is rotated fully clockwise, the ohmmeter indicates the circuit breaker L to T primary contacts are closed. Note the manual motor starter includes an adjustable dial for the purposes of adjusting the overload current. Now we'll install the manual motor starter on our motor controls trainer board on the top DIN rail right next to the circuit breaker and set of terminal blocks utilized by the control transformer. Note the plug is currently locked into the lockout tagout enclosure and the circuit breaker is open. We can now wire phases L1, L2, and L3 from the circuit breaker to the manual motor starter. The black, red, and blue wires serve this purpose. Note the circuit breaker and control transformer are above stream of the manual motor starter. If the circuit breaker is open, both the control transformer and anything else connected downstream would be depowered. If however the circuit breaker is closed and the manual motor starter was open, the control transformer would remain powered and anything connected downstream of the manual motor starter would be depowered. This connection scheme allows a level of functional isolation in that primary devices like motors could be depowered by the manual motor starter. However, the pilot level ladder logic could still function for testing or troubleshooting purposes, or perhaps be used to control other subcircuits themselves powered and depowered by additional manual motor starters. When the plug is unlocked and inserted and both the circuit breaker and motor starter are opened, note a DMM and AC voltmeter mode indicates only the top of the open circuit breaker is hot as expected. The bottom of the circuit breaker, the top of the motor starter, and the bottom of the motor starter are cold as expected. There is not one, but rather two opens in the path of anything connected downstream of the motor starter. When the circuit breaker is closed and the manual motor starter is open, a DMM and AC voltmeter mode indicates the top and the bottom of the open circuit breaker and the top of the motor starter are hot as expected. The bottom of the motor starter is cold as expected. There is still an open in its path. Note a DMM and AC voltmeter mode indicates both the primary and secondary sides of the control transformer are powered up as expected, allowing us a level of functional isolation. Only when the board is plugged in and both the circuit breaker and manual motor starter are simultaneously closed does the DMM indicate that the bottom of the manual motor starter is hot as expected. That's the point. The circuit breaker and manual motor starter are a series combination of switches. Both the circuit breaker and the manual motor starter must simultaneously be closed for anything below stream of the motor starter to function. Unplugging the board depowers anything downstream of the plug. 
opening the circuit breaker depowers anything downstream of the circuit breaker. Opening the manual motor starter depowers anything downstream of the manual motor starter. This staged approach allows a level of functional isolation in that selective portions of a larger system could be powered down as required and allow other sections to continue functioning. Similar to a circuit breaker, the manual motor starter also serves to protect the circuit from high current events associated with short circuits. Let's put this function to a test. Warning, do not try this at home. There are additional circuit protection elements in play. Here's the circuit breaker and manual motor starter hooked up to a contactor wired such that phase L1 and L2 go phase to phase with no current controlling element in between. Ordinarily, the closure of this contactor would be a bad idea under full sail. However, the moment the phase to phase event occurs, both the circuit breaker and the motor starter recognize the high current event and both simultaneously open up to save the day. Notice the rotary switch of the manual motor starter is in the tripped region of the dial, in contrast to the fully manually open position. A technician seeing the dial in this position would know that someone didn't just manually open it, but rather that a fault has occurred. When the cause of the short circuit has been detected and removed, both the circuit breaker and the manual motor starter need to be reset. Notice in contrast to simply reclosing it, the manual motor starter dial must often be rotated fully counterclockwise, then fully clockwise in order to reset it. In contrast to a circuit breaker, the manual motor starter additionally serves to protect the circuit from sustained overload conditions. Let's put this function to a test. Here's the circuit breaker and manual motor starter hooked up to a Y configuration of 10 ohm resistors. Given this is a 120 volt line to neutral, 208 volt line to line light industrial three phase AC system, this configuration would be expected to draw 12 amps when the contactor is closed. This level of current is below the short circuit interruption requirements of the circuit breaker and manual motor starter. However, the adjustable overload is currently set to 1 amp. After a period of time, the integrated overload elements of the manual motor starter recognize the sustained overload condition and opens the manual motor starter only. Note the circuit breaker remains closed because a short circuit was not detected, but rather a sustained overload. Additionally note it took around maybe 4 seconds for the overload element to open the manual motor starter when set at roughly 1 amp and drawing 12 amps. Finally, note the manual motor starter is trip free, meaning it cannot be reset nor held in the closed position while the overload elements are hot. Only when the overload elements have been given a chance to cool can a technician reset the manual motor starter. The overload setting can be adjusted pending the nature of the motor and the driven load. Note when the overload setting is increased to 1.6 amps. The manual motor starter takes roughly 6 seconds to open given the same 12 amp current draw. It makes sense. Recall that class 10 overloads take 10 seconds to trip when current is 6 times the overload setting. When the setting is at 1 amp, current draw was 12 times the overload setting and it tripped in roughly 4 seconds. When the setting is at 1.6 amps, current draw was approximately 7.5 times the overload setting and it tripped in roughly 6 seconds. I've got a reasonable degree of confidence this manual motor starter does what it says it can do, notably make or break connection to a motor and protect the motor from sustained overload conditions. Let's put this function to the test. The output of the manual motor starter is wired to a three-phase AC motor. When both the circuit breaker and the manual motor starter are closed, the motor rotates. When the manual motor starter is open, the motor free spins to a halt. No direction of rotation is fixed for this application. One must manually swap a pair of hardwire connections to the motor to change the direction of rotation. When the system is locked out and tagged out, and L1 is swapped with L2 and returned to service, note the motor rotates in the opposite direction when the manual motor starter is closed. Now this isn't exactly the best use of a technician's time for an application that necessitates frequent reversal of a motor. We'll examine manual reversing motor starter 
incorporating a drum or cam switch in upcoming applications exercises. Cost for the setup was pretty minimal. After all, it's just a manual motor starter and some wire. Part numbers appear in the information section of this video and the orientation to the Motor Controls Trainer Kit lecture, available at the Big Bad Tech channel. Later applications exercises and lectures will demonstrate magnetic motor starters that do not necessitate an operator's direct closure of the contacts. Thank you very much for your attention and interest. I'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.